have been running through guarding our faith. I think I'll bring that to a close today. Unless otherwise, I want to bring some uh, uh, seven habits that make us shipwreck our faith. Habits that make shipwreck your faith, that shipwreck our faith. So in our attempt to safeguard, to guard our, our faith, there are some seven things that we ought to watch over in order to keep our faith sound and keep our faith on. The scripture that I was referring to, take hold of that, of what you have. Take hold of what you have. Don't let it be taken away from you. Assumes that you are holding on to the right faith. You are having the correct standing and relationship with God. And so hold it, hold on to it. Don't let it slip off your fingers. Don't let anyone take it away from you. But if you are not in the faith, examine ye yourselves whether you be in the faith except ye be reprobates. If you examine yourself and find that you are not standing on that right foundation of the word of God, your faith is not built on a solid ground, then drop it up, pick the right thing. Praise the name of the Lord our God. The first thing that we ought to watch over so that we do not shipwreck our faith is the problem of loving the world. Loving the world. In First John, first letter of John, chapter number 2, we are reading scripture verse number 15, 16 and 17. And the apostle writing says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But what is loving the world? I thought God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What love, what, what world is this that God warns us against? What kind of a world is this that can make us shipwreck our faith? Verse 16, for all that is in the world, number one, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So we're talking about sinful desires of the flesh, sinful lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life. Maybe one of these days, God allowing me, I will speak about the pride of life. What is the pride of life? But for now, loving the world and the things of this world, the lusts of the flesh. What kind of things do you lust for or does your flesh lust for? Now remember, when we talk about the flesh, we are speaking about that which is not of the Spirit of God. There is what God wants you to desire. There is what the Word of God uh, wants you to desire. There is what the Spirit of God that dwells in you, if you have so allowed the Spirit of God to dwell in you, the desires of the Spirit. What does God want you to do? On the opposite of that, there is what the flesh what your body, what your sinful nature desires. To love the world is to want to satisfy the flesh, even if it means dissatisfying God. Number two, the second thing that will make you, your faith to be shipwreck, neglecting God's word, or simply put, rebellion to God's word. My dear brethren, God has endowed us. God has blessed us. God has given to us his word. That book in your hands, that book of books, that library of books, the Bible. Someone say the Bible is an acronym for basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic instructions. Basic instructions from God. How God wants you to live. How God wants you to prepare yourself. This world 
and the system of this world is not our end. The government that we are looking for is not a government of this world. We are looking for a government of God, the kingdom of God, not the government of this world, not the positions that people give in this world. And we have an instruction manual, the Bible. If you take heed to the words of this book, you will keep your faith. If you don't take heed to the instructions of this book, you will shipwreck your faith. So I Paul writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, he told him these words. Let's read as if they were written to us. Verse number 3 of chapter number 6, 1 Timothy, but I will read quickly from 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. We have teachings, my dear brethren. We have instructions in this book. If any man teach otherwise, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, wholesome words of God, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is, number one, proud. What does he know? Knowing nothing. Dotting about questions, strifes of words, whereof cometh what? Envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Wholesome words. These teachings promote a godly life. These teachings promote our faith. If you want to keep your faith, take a hold of these teachings. What teachings are we talking about? These teachings. These teachings. Amen? These teachings. Forget about the perceptions of the world. Forget about the priorities of the world. In Matthew chapter number 13, the Lord explaining the parable. Romans chapter number 13 and uh, scripture verse number 22. He says, he also that receiveth the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. 13, 22. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches chalk the word and he becomes unfruitful. If we are not careful, if we neglect the word of God, the world is an enemy to your faith. And before you realize your faith, the word of God will be chalked in your life. Your faith will be chalked. Have you ever tried to start a generator? They say, they say gadget there to remove chalk. You start, it refuses. You remove chalk. When you get chalked, you will not start up in your ministry, in your faith. Your faith will be, you want to crank it on and it won't, it won't start until you remove the chalk. There is some air somewhere that has built up in your faith. And it needs removing and sometimes... A rebuke will remove it sometimes. An admonition will, re will remove it sometimes. Cancel will remove the chalk sometimes. Who knows what else is needed? Maybe you will declare a personal fast and seek the Lord. Remove the chalk and get your faith going. Number three. Third thing that is likely to shipwreck your faith. Trusting your feelings. Trusting your feelings. In Je Jeremiah chapter number 17, scripture verse number 9, I don't remember the last time I read this scripture, but my mind often goes to this scripture without reading, without reading. The heart 
is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, we are living in a world where people are humanistic. There are many humanistic theories in the world today. Follow your heart, they will tell you. Follow your gut. You know that gut feeling? Do you have peace? Do you feel peace? Let me tell you something. Even peace in your heart is not good enough. Because it is possible to have peace in sin. In Hebrews chapter number 11, scripture tells us, speaking of Moses, he says, he said, uh, when Moses was of age, Hebrews 11 and uh, 24, 25, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses could have, of course, grew well as far as any growing up is concerned. He had royalty around him. We could say he was privileged. He was growing as a prince. He must have had a good feeling, don't you think? To have things at, at your beck and call. You could tell anyone to do what anything and they would do it with submission. When he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. This scripture tells us that sin, I mean, it's possible to enjoy sin. Why do you think people wake up so early to go and and commit sins, they are enjoying. There's another scripture that, that says they find, it, they find it strange that you do not go with them to the same excess of riot. That excess of riot, that's enjoyment, my friends. That is, uh, you know, feeling good and happy and uh, going from place to place, having party, after party and enjoying yourselves. And then they say, man, he, that was a night. Eh? Following your heart is not good enough. We ought to have something better than our hearts. We got to have a better gauge of things. We, we, we ought to have a better uh, meter of things than our hearts. Our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Our hearts many times will rejoice in God ungodliness. Romans chapter number one. People that rejoice in ungodliness. People that love hating one another. Brewing trouble for people. One proverb talks about uh, sometimes some people's lives are like uh, throwing arrows. You know, just like that. Don't trust your feelings. In Proverbs 14, Proverbs 14, 14, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. A backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And so we come to the next thing that we have to safeguard, which is very close to this one here. From trusting your, own, your feelings to relying on self. Beware of relying on self. Self-reliance is an enemy of the faith. The Christian faith is a faith of dependence. The Christian faith is not a faith of independence, but dependence. God has created humans, God has created us in such a way that we only thrive when we are connected to him. Anytime you feel like you are self-contained, self-sufficient, you don't need anyone. You don't even need God. You are on a road to shipwrecking your faith. Self-reliance stems from pride. The source of self-reliance is pride. God has created us in such a way that we find our, ourselves in him. We become complete in him. Without him, we are incomplete. Without him... Without him, I am nothing. Without him, 
doubt surely fail Without him I would be drifting Like a sheep without a sail Without him we are nothing Without God we are like a sheep that is drifting without sail. We are nothing. For without him, Jesus said in John chapter number 15, for without him, we can do nothing. Self-reliance. When you, when you feel like, I can do without the brethren. I can do without the family church. I can do without the ministry. I can do on my own. My friend, watch, you are going down. It may not appear like you are going down, but you are going down. How fast are you going to go down? I don't know, but finally, unless you correct, you will be down. So instead of self-reliance, what are we supposed to do? Rely on God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. See, this is the book. This is, this is the instruction manual. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That leaves no room for self-trust. That I say that leaves no room for self-trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Sometimes we, let me tell you something. You, you, you can be smart in the marketplace. You can even be smart in theology but never be smart with God. Everything, all knees shall bow at him. All knees must bow to the Lord. Your thinking, your understanding. Are you smart? No problem. Who is a wise man among you and endued with? Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Chapter is three. Scripture is verse number 13. Keep that in mind, 313. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, good conduct. His works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strive in your hearts, glory not and lie not one to another, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, Devilish, demonic, devilish. For where envies and striving is, there is confusion and evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, the wisdom that is from above is, first of all, easy to be entreated, willing to yield. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Relying on self. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct. Are you self-reliant or are you re trusting God and relying on God, depending on God? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. There's an S. The path of the righteous the path of the righteous is directed of God. The Lord weighs the way of the righteous. Don't be self-reliant. Don't trust even yourself. Self-reliance stems from pride. Keep that in mind.